Exactly. Sure. I'm ready for flight. Look at that. We got a little helper tail. Really, it is pretty much brand new. Yeah. sorts of reasons why they can't yeah. do well. I mean, they're not going to write a, 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 they're not going to open it up to high, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, I get it. You don't have to demonstrate. If you're real, you're stable. No. <laughs> did you have any problems then? Oh, did you? Really did someone was other than you? When you were at Sorry.
Here he comes, the rock star himself. Three years ago, he was Charles Lindbergh at the Rhinebeck Aerodrome. And uh, I don't know any famous Tommy pilots, but uh, you are one. Ken, my good friend Ken Cassens, the pilot of the aircraft this afternoon. Um, it looked beautiful up there. Can you uh, give us an idea of uh, what the flight was like? Uh, describe any flight characteristics and uh, where this event and actually sits in your career uh, for uh, flying these uh, old type of airplanes and something else maybe does Tommy as a World War I aircraft compare to anything else you've flown? Well thanks Stu and uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting this uh, wonderful uh, organization here and uh, uh, there was a lot of questions there, Stu. So uh, the, uh, the the airplane is a uh, uh, the fellows did an absolutely perfect job uh, restoring this airplane. They they couldn't have done anything better. They, they it's better than the factory. Actually, uh, actually better better than the, what the factory was turning out. Uh, and it was a good airplane when they turned it out too. But uh, they really did an exceptional job on this. Um, it, it flies uh, like a typical World War I airplane. It's not very stable. Um, some of the control inputs are pretty heavy on it. The, uh, it's, it's quite tail heavy. So you have to use uh, a lot of forward pressure on the stick. And uh, after about 10, 15 minutes, your arm really gets tired. So uh, I know when Cole Palin flew his, he had a bungee cord that he hooked around the stick to, uh, you know, take some of that forward pressure, help him out a little bit. And uh, Cole uh, from the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome, he flew his uh, quite a bit. He uh, did a couple of uh, uh, air show uh, acts with it. He would do a ribbon cut where they'd throw a roll of toilet paper out and see how many times they could cut it. And he's done that with the Tommy. But uh, it, it can be a handful, especially if it's a little windy. Today was perfect, perfect weather. We thank the weather gods for that. And uh, I don't know, I don't know what to, else to tell you other than uh, that they, they did a fantastic job restoring this airplane. So, uh, and uh, I don't know if you get up close to it now, you'll see all the castor oil that's all over it. Um, and that's normal. It's a uh, rotary engine and it's a one-way oil system. You put oil in the tank, it goes to the engine and it ends up coming out the exhaust and all over the... Uh, side of the airplane. That's what mainly the cowling is on there for, is to contain most of that oil mess. Uh, you probably see the guys now, they might even be cleaning it off. But it, uh, it burns castor oil, and uh, like I say, it's a one-way system, and it burns about uh, oh, one and a half to two gallons of castor oil every hour. So it does, it does use it. And the reason they use the castor oil is because that's a vegetable base, and the uh, fuel and the air and uh, gets going through uh, the, the hollow crankshaft. Through the uh, hollow crankshaft of the engine and then the castor oil is pumped into the engine through the oil pump. So the gas being a mineral base and oil a vegetable base, the, two, uh, the gas won't dilute the oil. So it gets good lubrication through the entire uh, operation of the engine. Other than that, uh, I'm going to turn it back to Stu. And uh, again, I thank all of you for coming out and uh, supporting us. Thanks a lot.